I'm your host, Bradford Lasseter, and welcome to another episode of Lasseter Factors Top 5, the show where I take a random topic and I make a top 5 out of it. And if you watched the last episode, thank you so much for watching. If you like this episode, like, comment, share, and subscribe. Let me know what you think in the comments section below. Now today's topic is the Saw franchise in honor of Spiral, which just came out. And yes, I did see that movie, and you can check out my review, which is on my Instagram. I'll leave a link in the description. Now before we get into this top five, let me give you my history with the Saw franchise because context matters. Now I remember these movies came out when I was in high school and they came out every year on Halloween and I never really looked, looked too much into it because I always pass them off as little silly torture movies that they keep making and everybody keeps going to for some reason. So. And then I remember a couple of years ago, news broke out that a new Saw movie was in development after they had just came out with Jigsaw, which came out in 2017. But then I heard that Chris Rock was attached to it, and I'm like, Chris Rock? And, and apparently Chris Rock, he's a huge fan of the Saw franchise, and it came out with his own idea of the Saw movie. So at that, I was like, okay, whatever. And then I remember I saw the trailer for Spiral, to which I'm like, huh, Chris Rock in this kind of role? And, this movie actually looks pretty good. Maybe I might give this a chance. But I still gotta watch the other Saw movies. And then Spiral was getting ready to come out. And then next thing you know, boom. And because of this fucking pandemic, the movie got pushed back pretty much a whole year from when it was intended to come out. And then it did actually come out and came out in theaters. And before I, before I watched Spiral, I went back and watched the other Saw movies. I watched at least three or two at a time, like every weekend. Believe me, there are some that I liked and some in which my in which my patience was tested and for this video I'm giving you my top five good things about the Saw franchise because these, this franchise has had its good moments, it's had its bad moments but instead of focusing on all the bad stuff I thought let's focus on some of the good things on why people keep going back to these movies because the reasons why people keep going back to these movies are admittedly fascinating so let's get into it. Coming in at number five is the psychological aspect of it. These movies are not just all blood and gore, like there is somewhat of a psychological aspect to it, which is something that I do like in horror movies. Is I, is I'm more of a, I'm more into psychological horror, and that's more my speed in terms of horror. Like I like a good bloody horror movie, but I like some horror movies that make you think and make you question yourself. And one of the good things about the Saw movies is you have John Kramer, and in which his origin was he thought he was gonna die and he tried to kill himself, but then it turns out he lived, and now he just he's just hell bent on making people appreciate life, and he's going after people that he going after people that wronged other people. Like let's say you have a judge, and then the judge sent, gave him gave somebody a sentence that they didn't deserve or whatever. Or people that have it good in life and got advantages over other people, or there's a, or there could be a theme of forgiveness in which somebody is trapped and somebody's given the option: like, are you gonna let them live or are you gonna let them die? The thing is, John Kermit, he's been putting people in situations in which they have to choose one thing or another, which makes for some creative scenes, some bloody creative scenes. But hey, and then coming in at number four is the actor Tobin Bell, who plays John Kramer, A.K.A. Jigsaw. No, for real, like. If, why isn't Tobin Bell in the conversation for classic horror icons? I'm not talking about the Jigsaw puppet, I'm talking about John Kramer because Tobin Bell, he is admittedly, he is, he is, he's just one of those actors that knows exactly what kind of movie he is making, so he is just chewing up scenery and he is having fun and he is giving 110%. And he is committing, like you may have like you may have some actors in these movies that's like probably just treating it as your regular horror franchise, but Tobin Bell, he's treating it like it's goddamn Shakespeare. Even right down to his philosophy in which I don't kill people. In which come on now, we know you killing people. Stop lying to yourself. Like I, in fact I think I remember I think it was either Saw Four, Saw Six, Saw Five. It was it was one of them in which he's talk he's having a scene where he's talking to Hoffman, which is his jigsaw follower. And, and, they're, and they're arguing over philosophy, and then John Kramer, he just comes out saying, Killing is distasteful! To me. Ooh, okay. Like seriously, why ain't John Kramer being talked about with Freddy Krueger, or Jason Voorhees, Michael Myers, Chucky, whoever? Give Tobin Bell his props. In fact, that's part of the reason why they kept bringing him back, because even, even after they killed him, they still kept using him. Coming in at number three is the ongoing story aspect of it. 
Once I got to like, I think movie two or three, that's when I realized what was going on, is that there was an ongoing aspect going on with all these movies in which you're following reoccurring characters. One moment you're following a doctor, then you're following a cop, and that cop knows another cop which comes into the next movie, or that person may know this person which is also a doctor, which plays into the third movie, and then that's when we get into the Jigsaw copycat scene. And the thing is, we're following cops that are actually trying to do the right thing, or we're following cops that have a personal vendetta against somebody so they take on the Jigsaw persona just so that they can get revenge, like Hoffman for killing, to kill somebody for that person killing his sister. But the ongoing aspect part of it works because it helps people that are not too into horror, but it gives them something to latch on to for the average audience. And it helps them follow these movies. And then coming in at number two is the police procedural aspect of it, which is probably the thing that I actually like about this series is that what I like is when they take two different genres and blend them together. The MCU does this a lot, and, with, and in the case of this, it's a, the Saw franchise, it is a torture franchise, it's a horror franchise. But at the same time, they also managed to make a police procedural out of this franchise. Because almost every movie is a police procedural, which majority of the time you're just following cops saying how all the cops are pretty much on a manhunt for Jigsaw or trying to stop whoever Jigsaw is at the moment. In the city they live in, it just has a horrible history with all the Jigsaw killings. In which somebody keeps coming back and finishing what John Kramer started. But coming in at number one is The Kills. And that's probably the one thing everybody keeps coming back to these movies is for the kills and how creative they are. And I really mean that, Pen. These, these traps are admittedly creative, then, but it also helps into the psychological aspect of it because you could be in a trap and you could either do this or do this. And sometimes the option B is a lot better than option A because it's like, all right, you got to either sacrifice something or you are going to die. And sometimes death is less painful than what you gotta do to get yourself out of the trap. Like, like you, let's say you find a key, but then you drop the key in like this, this pit full of needles, and so you have to go in and actually reach in, but the needles are just stabbing you, and ugh. Or you got a pendulum in which somebody is tied to a chair, and then a pendulum is swinging, and you gotta pretty much sacrifice your hands, or get your hands cut off, or else that pendulum is gonna crush you and cut you. You're chained up and the only way you can get out is if you get this key, but the twist is the key is the key is in a bowl full of acid and so you're you're gonna be burning your hand up or something is gonna come by and kill you. You you could be you could be in a corn tower in which the corn is coming in and and possibly suffocate unless this person that is also trapped sacrifices his leg. You got a shotgun collar on in which if you let John Kramer die, that shotgun collar is gonna go off. But of course, you also got the classic in which you got the two people that's in the bathroom and somebody, they might have to cut their cut their leg off for us. Or just that whole first movie where you are just contained to one area. So many creative kills, some a lot bloodier and gruesome than others, and some just downright silly. Some are just hard to watch, but, but the kill traps are just what makes this franchise going, and that's probably my, my number one reason why people just keep coming back to this franchise, and that's good about this franchise. But all in all, those are my top five reasons why people love these movies. That's it for the day. Thank you so much for watching. And if you like this video, again, like, comment, share, subscribe. Let me know what you think in the comment section below. I'm your host, Bradford Lasseter. Be safe. Wash your hands. Peace.